All right, welcome back to MP2. In this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our first test case, which is uh, parsing, loading this uh, preferences.csv and converting it to JSON. Um, and so the first thing I'm gonna do, like I always do, is I'm gonna open up my test file and I'm gonna zero in on this test that I want to run. And now the first time I do this, you know, I'm gonna find the test in the file um, and I'm gonna click on this little icon over here and hit run. But you'll notice that when you run one of these tests up here in your run configurations, Android Studio loads it up there for you. One of the things that you, know, you want to learn to do as you become more efficient software creator so that you can build cool things more, more quickly, right? I mean, a lot of us have this, these beautiful visions of things we want to accomplish. It's like the, the software is always in the way and slowing us down. So the degree that you can get a little bit more efficient, this is still true for me. There's like super cool stuff I want to do. And I'm like, oh, it's going to take a few days um, or a week or a month sometimes, right? Uh, and that's what's frustrating about it because you can kind of see it in your mind's eye. Um, so how do you work a little bit more quickly, work a little bit more efficiently? Uh, one of the things is you get into good rhythms and good patterns. And part of that is being efficient about how you work with your tools. So for example, Android Studio and every other sort of sophisticated uh, tool that you use when you develop software and create things is designed to help with that. So, you know, when I run this test for the first time, I have to find it. But after that point, Android puts it up here, Android Studio puts it up here in the run configuration so I can run it again easily. And there's actually a couple ways that I can do that, right? As soon as it actually gets done running, right? You'll see that if I hit this play button, that'll run the test again. But I don't even have to use the mouse. I can actually just use a keyboard shortcut and it sees there's a hint there that shows that. That's for my machine. So on my machine, it's Alt uh, Shift R and it runs the test again. And you'll see it should run a little bit more quickly this time because I just ran. Um, and so, you know, I don't even have to come to this file. I could focus on what I'm doing in, in my server file and, and let this um, and come back and run this test on a regular basis pretty easily. And so these little sort of tricks that you get into so that you can operate more efficiently and not spend less time like poking around in, in, your, in your tool is, uh, these, these, are, these are valuable. Okay, so let's look at what we actually need to do for this. So what this is testing is uh, a part of the server code called load preferences, this method right here. And what we're doing in MP2 is we're extending your exploration of Android a little bit, but we're still what we're still going to be doing is we're going to be having you write code that is heavily based on code that we already gave you. And this is something you'll do when you start with a new project. Like if you're working with other people, you know, they'll ask you, oh, can you add this feature? And a good strategy is to find something similar and to mimic it, right? To use it as a guide. So here we already have a method called load restaurants. And this method loads data from a file and converts it into JSON. And so I've got new data in a new file called preferences.csv. And so it seems like load restaurants will probably be a pretty good way to start. Okay, so the first thing that load restaurants does, and so we're gonna spend a little bit of time understanding this method. The first thing that it does is it actually needs to read the contents of the file into a string. Now, this is a very Java-esque way of doing this. I'm gonna copy this in here, and then I'm gonna print uh, the input, and I'll run the test again. I just want you to see that, oh wait, sorry, this is loading restaurants.csv, okay, so that's wrong. That would be helpful, right? This is another reason to kind of like run the test frequently and print things as you go, because I can clearly see, if I look at this, this is the wrong file. Okay, so let's, let's load the data from preferences.csv, um, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see what's in there and we'll, we can kind of match it up with what we expect uh, given uh, preferences.csv. Now you might wonder like what's going on with this line of code? So there's a convention in Java that if I put files in this resources directory in a particular place, then I can load them using this git resource as stream method. Now this bit here using scanner is Unfortunately, my bad. This is sort of a bad cut and paste um, bit that I that I brought in from the Java solution, uh, the the Java solution code, right? Uh, to be honest, for those of you who are working in Kotlin, the way I've been working on the NP is that I develop it in Java first, and then I write the Kotlin code. Why? Because the Kotlin code is usually a lot nicer. And so the difficulty level needs to be calibrated based on what we do in Java, because there's things in Java that just get a little bit nastier than they get in Kotlin, because Kotlin's a nicer language, you know? 
Um, anyway, so you, you benefit from that, but you don't benefit from that when I forgot to do things the right way. So let's fix this. Uh, there's no need to, so, so in Java, it's just like this common known thing that it's really hard to read data just from a file, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change this. And instead of doing get resources stream, I'm gonna do get uh, resource. And then I'm gonna change this. I don't need to use all this weird stuff. Uh, and then I'll use read text. So there's this nice read text method that I can call um, on the result of calling get resource. Uh, this will throw a null pointer exception if that file doesn't exist, which is kind of the right thing to do here because that's an error. And you'll see that I can get the data in the same way. So there's just a little bit of a nicer way of doing things. All right, so let's go back to load restaurants and see what was happening there. Um, so load restaurants uh, called, uh, created the CSV reader. And you can do this if you want, right? But we don't really need to with the data from preferences.csv because it's a little simpler uh, to work with. Um, in particular, one of the reasons that we used the CSV reader was that we were worried that some of our records might have commas in them. Like a restaurant name might have a comma in it, and so we have to be careful about that. If we just split the lines based on commas, that's going to give us some trouble. So if I look at my preferences.csv, what's in here, each one of these records, these unique IDs, we'll talk about that in a minute, does not have a comma in it. They never have commas in them. So it's safe to just split these based on commas and to just split things based on lines and to do the whole thing in a little bit of a simpler way. So let's try that. So we'll say for line in input.lines, um, which is a method that I can use to just split input based on a new line character, I'll print um, line. And for fun, uh, just so we can kind of get keep track of what's going on here, let's create a, a variable named i, and we'll actually print um, i, and then the line. This will help us make sure that we're getting all the data out of the file, and then I'll increment line. And I suspect that that's I suspect that Android Studio uh, has a, a suggestion for a better way to do this, and it does. And, and these hints are actually really helpful, and you could use it. I'm just going to leave that because I know I'm about to get rid of that index variable, so I'm just going to leave it there. And you'll see that it looks like I'm pulling 45 lines out of this file because I'm indexing starting at zero because I'm a computer scientist. Um, how many lines are in the file? 45. Good. Okay. So I'm getting all the data out of there. Good. Um, now. What do we need to do? So now I have a line, and now what I want to do is I want to split it. So I'll say parts is equal to uh, line dot, and I'll throw in a trim here for good measure, split based on comma. And now let's print the uh, parts dot size. How about that? Uh, we'll, we'll see how many fields each line has. And I just did this for Java, and I confirmed it. The first line should have 10 fields. I'm, you know, I'm... Uh, I, I, I have second sight or something, right? I can predict a look at that 10 fields. And in fact, if you go into the CSV, which I would do, and count, you'll see that there's 10 fields in there. Okay, good. Um, so now, you know, what I would, I'm, I'm not going to show you exactly how to do this. I know you're hoping. You're like, oh, just keep going. Uh, no, this is where the fun starts. So, you know, look through the code in load restaurants and figure out how to, uh, to to duplicate some of this. So instead of a list of restaurant JSON object, what you're supposed to return is a list of preference JSON objects, but a lot of the code is very similar. Um, you know, you're gonna create, you know, an array node outside, you add things to it, and then you return it as a, as a string or a pretty string, it doesn't actually matter, right? Um, the only tricky part is working with this array. Because the idea here is, so for example, we could say that the person, so the person ID, uh, based on what we know about the format of this, is the first item in the line, and then the rest of the items are these restaurant IDs, and those need to be put into their own field as a JSON array. And this is something that we will cover, or we did cover in the lesson devoted to this uh, test, where we talk about how to work with Jackson and how to create these objects. Um, so that should help there. But, but otherwise, you know, the code that you have here is a pretty good model for what to do. Uh, you need to make some small changes, like I just said, based on, um, based on you know, the, to, to achieve a slightly different result. But that's really common in programming, right? Starting with something and then making some tweaks and using that to solve a, a related problem that's similar. It's a really useful thing to learn how to do. To be honest, if you learn how to take some code that you found and make a small change to get it to do something different, you can pretty much solve like every problem you need to solve and, and, and build some really neat things. All right, so let's look at preferences.csv. I just want to talk about what this is. 
So what are these weird values in here? So, so this is something that's called a unique identifier or UUID. And the idea here is that anyone anywhere on earth should be able to generate two of these and they should be different. So anywhere I generate these, anywhere on earth, I can generate one and it should be distinct. Now, is this a guarantee? No, it's probabilistic because there's some tiny, 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 tiny probability that two different people would generate the same unique ID. But look at how long this value is, right? Oh, sorry, I've got two here. Okay, it's only, it's only this long. <laughs> That's, that, that would be even longer. So this value is so big. Essentially, you can think of this as just a massive, massive number that two random guesses from within that, that pool are the probability of them being the same is so small that we can essentially ignore it, right? Uh, we're going to say that uh, that all of these are distinct. Now, they're all not distinct because some of them are the same because they refer to restaurants. Now, the first one of these is a person ID, and you actually don't have any information about people yet. You just know that this represents, this maps to some information about, about a person. But the rest of them, some of them will map into this file, this restaurants.csv file, because there are unique IDs in here too. And so this is a common approach in computer science this uh, of assigning a unique identifier to something and then using that to refer to it, right? And I can use this, I'm essentially using this to link two pieces of data together. I have data about what restaurants people like, and I have data about the restaurants themselves. And by assigning a unique identifier to each restaurant, I can then use that in the preferences file to indicate the restaurant without having to use something like a name or something like that that wouldn't necessarily be guaranteed to be unique. Okay, so uh, you should be all set up here to, to, to wrap up load preferences. Now work slowly, work incrementally, run the test reads frequently, and when you need help, you know where to find us.